Hello everyone and welcome to today's uh, lesson. Uh, today's Python topic is going to be data types and variables. So the things that we're going to be going over are integers. Um, I'm going to type these out in the syntax that Python recognizes them as. Uh, for example, Python doesn't understand what an integer is, but it understands what an int is. As you can see, the color changes. So we're going to go over ints, integers. We're going to go over um, strings. So that's str. We're going to go over um, floats, which is a floating point. Uh, that's the long name for it is a floating point. Uh, Boolean, so that's bool. So that's for Boolean logic. It's a true or false statement. We'll, we'll go over that shortly. We'll also be discussing the assignment operator of the equal sign. So that's how you assign a variable a name or a value. Um, so we're going to be going over assignment operators. So that's basically just the equal sign. So we'll start off by creating our first variable and uh, we'll, we'll start off with integers. So first I'm going to describe what an integer is. Uh, an integer is basically just a number. The thing with integers is um, it cannot include a fraction. So 3.14 would not count as an integer in Python. Um, something that would be an integer, just the number 3, the number 1,000, 10, something, uh, basically a whole number. So fractions do not work. Um, so we'll start off by um, declaring uh, miles. I'll use miles because uh, tomorrow I have to drive back home. And I'll be driving. 248 miles so this works in Python um, when creating a variable there's things you have to take into account uh, there's rules you have to follow so miles I can't start off my variable name I can't start it off with a number I also can't have two words so miles to drive this doesn't work in Python if you wanted to do something like this including spaces you could put underscores in place of spaces if uh, you really wanted to do that. Uh, I'm going to keep it very simple. I'm going to just put miles. So after um, after I declared this, um, basically what ends up happening is now we have a variable that we made called miles. Yeah, miles, and I put 248. So now that is that value. So anywhere in this program, we have something miles, and it's equal to 248. So these are equal to each other. So basically, you made miles an integer. Um, another thing to note is, uh, say if you put miles somewhere else in your code, um, say I wanted to put 20, 20 miles, what this will end up doing is, at first, it'll be 248. But as soon as this line of code runs, um, it will overwrite what you had before. And now this new value for miles is 20. So that miles equal to 248 doesn't exist anymore. So that's, that's something to keep note of. Um, another thing to keep note of is I declared miles to be 248, the integer, this way, assuming that the computer was going to pick up 248 as an integer. Um, but the correct way to actually make sure that it is an integer is by putting int and per, uh, putting int as well as a number in the parentheses. So now for sure, miles is an integer of 248. And this works exactly the same way with all of these. As you can see, we got integer, string, float, bool. And that is exactly why I wrote them this way, because like I said, the computer actually knows what int is. So that's a good thing to keep note of. OK, let's declare a new variable. Uh, this time we'll declare a string. So the same concept, same procedure. So call it hometown. Cause this, uh, we're gonna use uh, my hometown as an example. This is where I'm driving to tomorrow. This is where this is what's 248 miles away. Uh, so same concept. You could put the str because you're about to use a string in parentheses. And then uh, within these parentheses, in order to create a string, um, you use these double quotes. That's exactly how the computer recognizes that you're using a string is by using these double quotes. So um, let's put Bishop California in here. Um, within these uh, quote, quotation marks, you could literally put anything. You could put numbers, decimal points, spaces, like I just did, uh, commas. Um, 
Anything goes within a string. And just like uh, for integers, if I want, um, you don't really need to put the str in front of it, and you could kind of like tr trust the computer to know that that's, that's going to be a string. But if you really want to, you know, play it safe, you can just do the str in front of it. Uh, strings are good for um, using names. Like if you want to assign a name to something, um, that's really a good way to use a string. Um, Cause I can even put my name, anything, uh, names. So uh, my name is equal to, and right here I'm gonna assume the computer is gonna know this as a string, but yeah, you, that works as well. Okay, let's create a new variable. Let's create a float this time. Okay, so a float is it is a number just like an integer is with higher precision. You can actually put uh, a decimal point in there, and that's something you can't do with an integer. So I just got a notification. I got my exam back uh, for thermodynamics. So I could put uh, thermo uh, final grade. And believe it or not, that score that I got on my thermo grade was uh, 85.7%. So right there, I assumed that the computer was going to pick up that decimal point and know that that was going to be a float. Just like, uh, this is the last time I'm going to repeat this, but same thing. You could put float within these parentheses to make sure it's a float. Uh, one thing to keep note of, um, if you wanted to get an integer and create, uh, turn it into a float, it would just add a point zero to the end, if that makes sense. So for miles, I want if I, I'm gonna basically overwrite miles again, like I described here earlier in my word bank, which reminds me I haven't uh, updated my word bank. So we got that in our word bank, our variable bank. Um, so I'm gonna overwrite miles like I said previously. So miles, um, say I wanted to put it as a float, you could do uh, miles as a integer or a float two forty eight. And this, um, so basically what will happen is uh, Miles just got overwritten, uh, overwritten with this new variable, same thing, 248, but now I wrote it as a float. So now it's going to be 248.0. That's the new value that's for Miles after doing that. Okay, lastly, um, let's declare a uh, Boolean variable. So what a Boolean is, uh, it, it's basically a variable that can only have uh, one of two values, and that's either true or false. Um, it's never anything else than uh, true or false. So in computer logic, in Python, uh, other, um, other uh, languages, we could write this right here, a boolean. So we could put, uh, okay, that's good. A zero is equal to false. Okay, I'm running out of room here, but then uh, we could put a, uh, we'll put it right here. A one is equal to true. So when declaring a uh, bool, a boolean, it's the same exact thing as before. So uh, we could put tall, because I'm very short. I'm uh, about five six. So uh, tall, we could put. Uh, am I tall? No. Let's put false. Okay. As you can see, nothing. It, it didn't uh, change color or anything like that. So when creating a bool, you have to use the proper syntax and capitalize. So now you can see uh, false works there. Um, same thing with true. If you just put true, it won't really recognize it. You have to capitalize true. And it changed color. So as you can see here, when declaring a bool, uh, like I said, there's only a tr two um, very, uh, values you could put for a boolean. So it's either true or false. So I'm, I'm not tall. I'm going to put false. Um, so that's the simple way to declare a boolean. You could also do what you did before. The computer actually picks up true and false very easily, so 
you don't really need to put the bull here, but it's good practice if you really wanted to. So that works perfectly fine. Uh, another thing with uh, booleans, so if I wanted to put false in here, something that would not be proper and something that wouldn't work out is putting these quotes right here. So now that turned it into a string. As you can see, the color is not the same as it was when I put false here. So booleans are really important in uh, functions and things like that, which I will be going over in future lessons. And um, I use them all the time in code that I've had to write for robotics. So they're just, those are very valuable. And uh, that kind of sums up uh, my data types and variables. I uh, hope you enjoyed. I, this is my first video that I recorded, so I was a little sh uh, nervous. And thank you for spending this time with me.